So the Bible says that in the last days there shall be doctrines of devils. And the Bible also says that concerning Satan, we are not ignorant of his devices. So it is very important that Christians nowadays know about what's happening in our world today that's preparing the way of the Antichrist and the end times. Now, one of the things to know about the Antichrist is, which a lot of people have heard, the infamous mark of the beast. Now, what is exactly the mark of the beast? Some people, they say that it's actually the chip in the hand, or it's an outside stamp on your hand. But the Bible shows something interesting about what the mark of the beast is. What you got to understand is this. If you look at Revelation chapter 13, it doesn't call everything just the mark. 666, right? That's the number of the Antichrist. But it's going to be a mark, name, and number. So, this is what I believe. I believe that if it's not just one, 666, there are several things that the Antichrist can give where you will get 666. The thing is this, is that the mark, name, and number of the beast, everyone's going to receive these three things or one of these three things. And when they receive these three things, it can be the credit card number, that's what it could be for all I know, or the chip in the right hand or it could be some kind of identification or a symbol outside. Yet the mark, we know what it is. One of the marks of the beast, which is very interesting. But first look at 1 Corinthians chapter 16. And notice how the Bible closes its greeting at 1 Corinthians chapter 16, which the modern Bibles change. And when they change this, they're actually, believe it or not, giving some sort of preparation for the Antichrist. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 20. The Bible says, All the brethren greet you. Greet ye one another. Notice what Paul says. Holy kiss. So the Christian kiss is considered holy kiss. But in modern Bibles, they don't call it a holy kiss. What they call it is a kiss of peace. Now, why is that dangerous? Because that's actually what the Antichrist does. The Antichrist, he, what he does is that he gives the kiss of peace. So I'll just put modern Bibles and be right here. Now, look at the book of Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13. And look at 2 Samuel chapter 15. 2 Samuel chapter 15. So Revelation 13 and 2 Samuel chapter 15. Now, what's very interesting before we dig into Revelation 13 is you'll notice how there are types of Antichrist in the Bible. In fact, one of the types of the Antichrist will literally be the Antichrist himself. Anyways, when we look at these types of the Antichrist, what you're going to notice right here, what did they do? What did these Antichrist types do in the Bible? It's very interesting. Look at 2 Samuel 15 and Revelation chapter 13. You know what these Antichrist types did? I'll tell you what they did. They greeted with a kiss of peace. What they did was they greet them with a kiss of peace. Look at the book of 2 Samuel chapter 15. And we're going to look at verse 5. Absalom. Do you know what that person's name means? Absalom means man of peace. And he's a great type of the Antichrist in the Bible who went against King David, who's a type of Jesus Christ. So let's look at 2 Samuel chapter 15 and we'll look at verse 5. And it was so that when any man came nigh to him to do him obeisance. So this is a greeting. He put forth his hand and took him and kissed him. And on this manner did Absalom to all Israel that came to the king for judgment. So Absalom stole the hearts of the men of Israel. So David as a type of Christ, his kingdom is being stolen and being attacked by this different king who's trying to take over, who's a great type of the Antichrist, Absalom. But this man, Absalom, notice how he greeted people. He greeted people with a kiss. And what does Absalom mean? Man of peace. 
But here's another Antichrist type. Go to the book of Matthew. Go to the book of Matthew. Uh, John, excuse me, John chapter 17. John chapter 17, and we're going to look at verse 12. John chapter 17, and we're going to look at verse 12. Now, this is something very, very interesting. Do you know Judas Iscariot, we know he greeted Jesus with a kiss to represent peace. But do you know what Judas is called? Judas, he's actually called son of perdition. Now, we're not going to turn to this verse, but I'll write it right here. Do you know who the Antichrist is? He's called son of perdition. The evidence is 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. The Antichrist is the son of perdition, 2 Thessalonians 2. But you know what Jesus called Judas? He called him son of perdition. You know what that means? That means Judas Iscariot will be the Antichrist. But do you know how he greeted people? He did it with a kiss. Now look at John chapter 17 and verse 12. While I was with them, so Jesus is talking about his 12 disciples, in the world I kept them in thy name. So he kept his disciples except one. And he tells you who that one is. Those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost. But who? The son of perdition. So Jesus plainly said that he kept all his disciples except one disciple, which is obviously Judas Iscariot. But he called Judas Iscariot son of perdition. How did Judas greet the Lord Jesus Christ at the garden to make peace? The greeting of peace, a kiss. Interesting. So we notice right here that one of the signs of the Antichrist is a kiss of peace. But look at Revelation 13. This is even more interesting. Revelation chapter 13, verse 2. Where did we get the idea of the mark of the beast, huh? I'll tell you where the Bible mentions about mark of the beast. Why did it say that? Why did it say that? Because of this animal. Look at Revelation chapter 13 and verse 2. The Bible says, And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Now notice right here, look at verse 17. The beast is what? A leopard, right? What is the mark of a leopard? You ever seen a mark of a leopard before? Doesn't it look like a kiss? Like two lips. <laughs> That's the mark of the leopard. The mark of the leopard, you'll see that all over him. And you'll notice that it almost looks like a kiss as well. But the Bible did tell you what? The mark of a leopard. Mark of the beast. What is it? Just look at the leper, what his mark is. It's almost like a kiss. It looks like a kiss. Look at Revelation chapter 13 and verse 17. The Bible says, And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, but not just mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. See that? So we do know this, that the identification of the Antichrist is not just a chip in the right hand or forehead. It's going to be many different options. The Bible says mark, name, number. And the mark of the beast, we do know that one of it is definitely what? A kiss. So here's the thing, is that the Antichrist, when he gives his mark to the people, that's where we Bible believers, if you study a lot of the Bible, are going to agree and find out that there is definitely a kiss of the Antichrist involved with the mark. That's why what's very interesting is look at the book of Psalms. Psalms chapter 2. Psalms chapter 2 and Revelation 14. Psalms chapter 2 and Revelation 13. This is fascinating stuff. Fascinating stuff. But I'm going to tell you one thing. I guarantee you this. A lot of churches, even those who profess to be Bible believers, but they are not, they don't teach this kind of stuff. You know why? Because they don't study much of that book. 
Look at the book of Psalms chapter 2 and Revelation chapter 14. And I didn't make this stuff up either. There are different Bible-believing pastors who know this kind of teaching and even teach it. I'm just repeating what I've learned. Look at Psalms chapter 2 and Revelation chapter 14. Now look, when Jesus Christ comes down after the millennium, look what Jesus says. Look at verse 6. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. So Jesus is on the earth. So we do know this is after the tribulation, after the Antichrist. What happens? I will declare the decree. The Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with the rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings. Be instructed, ye judges of the earth. So there is no doubt right now, Jesus, so you'll notice in this passage, Jesus is ruling on the earth. So that's after the tribulation. And all the world are worshiping him. But look how they greet him when they serve him. Verse 11, serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Why? Why should you be afraid? Look at this. Interesting. Why does the Bible say this? Kiss the son, lest he be angry, and he perish from the way, when his wrath is kindled but a little. Look at this. If you don't kiss Christ, if you don't kiss Christ, you know what that is? You are damned. His wrath. His damnation. But you know what's connected to his wrath? Look at Revelation 14. Boom. Mark of the beast. Kiss Christ. Why? Because it's a kiss that damns you to hell. So you want to get the right mark, the right kiss. Look at Revelation 14. Revelation chapter 14. Fascinating. The Word of God is absolutely fascinating. The Bible is never a boring book. Verse 11, And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night. So damnation. To what? Who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth, look, the mark of his name. So if you have this mark, you're damned. And that's called wrath. Look at verse 10. Verse 10, The same shall drink of the wine of, look at that, wrath of God. Boom, scripture with scripture shows you so much truth and amazing things. So we see right here that there's no doubt that the mark of the beast, one of its marks is definitely going to be this, one that looks like a kiss. We see that with the types of the Antichrist throughout the Bible. Judas did that, and you're going to have to do that with the Son. Why? Because Satan always copycats Jesus Christ, right? So why will he not copycat Jesus Christ when he rules? And thus, it's kissing who? Anti-Christ. And then when Jesus, the real Christ, comes down, this guy is out. And say, no, this is the real Christ that you want to kiss. Remember, Satan always wants to imitate God, so there is absolutely no doubt that he will receive one of his signs of allegiance as a kiss.